Hey everyone, Wolf81TX here, and today we're going to be talking about the SKS. Now, I was recently asked, how do you take an SKS with a fixed 10 round magazine and convert it to use the interchangeable or duckbill style SKS magazines? It's actually really simple and takes pretty much just a few minutes sometimes and I'll get to that sometimes here in a little bit first let's go ahead and start off with the gun uh, I've got the uh, bayonet out just to keep it out of the way and you'll see why later the okay, first thing open up the action make sure it's unloaded obviously then take your safety selector switch throw it forward get it behind the trigger get it out of the way I'll show you why in a moment after you've gone through all that, then right on the back end of your trigger guard, I'm going to see if I can look, get it to focus in on that. I'm getting my face out of the way, so maybe it'll actually focus on the gun. Okay, you'll see a little button. That button there, it's got a little dent in it. That's what releases everything on this gun, quite literally. The... SKS was designed to be simple. So simple that the only tool you need to take it apart is one unfired round. That's all you need. Now, normally, I use a punch to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and use the round for you guys. If you take it and you put it in there, it goes right into that little dimple. Push forward. Ah. There we go. And then the fire control group will pop up. You want to go ahead and open that up. Remove your fire control group. Now, remove the magazine. Pretty simple. Okay, next, the reason I had to get the bayonet out of the way is I'm going to take this apart so I can show you what you may or may not need to do. You want to go ahead and grasp the barrel, grasp the stock. You want to pull up and out and then kind of down. That way you get it out from right there. It'll hold it in and just remove the stock for now. Now, here's what you need to keep an eye on. This is the magazine catch. See that? That is what you're going to need to keep an eye on of what you might, you may or may not need to do any adjustments to to make this work. Like we had to thin this one up a little bit. If you look real close. I don't know if it'll show it. See some grind marks right there. Take a Dremel tool. Just kind of, we had take a little bit of the material off do it slowly don't you don't really want to heat everything up but that's what I did anyways I'm real particular about things like that just remove a little bit of the material on the side and that'll make it to where those magazines will be able to line up in there a little bit better uh, I have heard of people not having to do that but I had to do it in order to make some of the magazines go in now and uh, just so to show you this hook right here this is what your fire control group hooks into all right now that you've seen all that go ahead and put the stock back on slide that there Get that lined up okay stocks back on now Take your fire control group, while holding the gun right here, get the fire control set, give it a good slap, it, that button will lock in, and you are ready to use your duckbill magazine. All you've got to do is take that hook part, put it up in there, lock it in, and you're ready to go. 
Use the uh, magazine release, same as you did to release the box before to uh, get extra rounds that you weren't going to shoot out. And there you go. It's easy as simple. It's real easy. It's real simple. I have heard of some people having to remove some material from the stock itself to get these magazines to fit in. And so you may need to do that. You may not. Uh, just something to keep a lookout for. Uh, of course, you may need, may or may not need to uh, take a Dremel tool to that tab so that it'll have to be, so that your magazine will work correctly. Now, there is one other thing that you can do. In order for these to work, in order to actually be able to load them into your gun, that bolt has to be back. You cannot load them if that bolt's closed. Now, there, I almost thought about doing it, but you literally, you take a little bit of material off your bolt, um, if I remember correctly, you can look other guys on YouTube have videos on how to do it. It's super simple. I watched them once, but it's been a while. And you can modify your bolt to allow you to insert a magazine without having the bolt back. Um, since I decided I was going to be going back to the fixed 10 round magazine, I decided I wasn't going to do it. And when I do occasionally, put these back on I just go ahead and make sure the bolts like lock back before I uh, swap them out and now let's say after all that's said and done you've dremeled everything off and you want to go back to your fixed 10 round magazine it's super simple all you do remove your fire control group Take your magazine, hook it in just the same way you would with the other magazines. Now, here's where it gets a little bit different. Is your mag is the fixed 10 round has this open and close. You will not be able to get this thing in and you will be cussing and screaming up a storm if you try and leave this up too far. You want it open, but you don't want it open too far. Boom. Make sure that's down into the stock. Squeeze that in, just like so. Make sure it's in place. Now here's where it gets tricky, is these are set to very tightly go against the fire control group. So when you're putting your fire control group in, as long as you're holding everything right, having this down, it's set in the right spot, your fire control group will go in. If you're having an issue, if your fire control group is not wanting to go down, you need to take take a moment, make sure this is far back up against that notch, and make sure that the barrel is settled into the stock. Then go ahead and try reinstalling your fire control group. Now, I've got this resting on my knee. I've got that in. Everything's notched down. Go ahead and give it a slap. Okay, we're locked in. Go ahead and give this one a slap. It's locked in. Move trigger. All right. And you're ready to go. Pretty simple, right? Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. I tried covering everything that I can remember about how we do it. Uh, I hope I covered everything. I uh, don't think I forgot anything of all the steps you need to do. Uh, plus, you also, hopefully, if you didn't know before, you may have just learned how to fully take apart your SKS. You never know. I mean, the only other thing that I could show you would be removing the gas tube, which, oh, why not? Uh, we can do that. Is move the gas tube right here on the site. You got this little lever right here. Just pull that up, make it to where you can pull that out, and there's your gas block. Go 
Go ahead and give that a shake. There we go. Pretty simple. That's how you take apart your gas system. A lot of people won't do it for, oh, who knows when. I like to take mine out and take it apart and clean it after I go to the range. Especially when you're using some of this really nasty ammo. I mean, it's nothing. It doesn't take but a minute. And you know next time you go out, you're ready to go. That's how you take that apart. So now you know how to take the whole gun apart. Uh, hold on, I didn't show you this. Go ahead and put the bolt forward. If you want to take the back end apart, you just pull that out. And it's basically the same as an AK-47 right here. Got your spring. It's got the same basic internals. Oh, not the same basic internals as an AK-47, but it's similar. Somebody's going to give me crap for saying that, I know, but oh well. Oops, get the spring mounted up in there. Slide that back in. That. Okay. And back to it. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, leave a comment, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. And y'all take care.